There goes Can Cannon. Yay! Been working on this for several days. The video on YouTube made it look so easy. <laughs> Please check out this guy's YouTube channel. He's the teacher I wish I had in high school. Mr. Yaney suggests this exact type of can, and I find it to fit perfectly snug with tennis balls. I'd wish I'd had as much success as him with the lighter fluid. Fortunately, the king of random had another fuel suggestion. Wow. <laughs> Methanol evaporates faster and at a lower temperature than lighter fluid. I watched video playback to measure the tennis ball's time in the air. Then the Khan Academy showed me how to use the five seconds to calculate the tennis ball's altitude. I researched the weight of a typical tennis ball and converted the grams into a kilogram to calculate the speed the tennis ball was traveling when it hit my hand. And finally, I converted the meters per second into miles per hour, proving that the tennis ball hit my hand at a highway speed. <laughs> Lighting the evaporated gas causes it to expand rapidly. Crash and burn, huh, Mav? Slider. You stink. Got one. All right, I've learned a lot on this journey. Um, the tennis ball needs to be snug in the, uh, the can here, and it's kind of like flicking something with your finger. If I just go like this, I can do it pretty hard, but if I hold it back and build up the, the uh, pressure, I can get a, ouch, <laughs> a much stronger flick. So the same thing with your tennis ball. Um, you want it to be snug so that when the uh, explosion happens, it builds up pressure and pushes and then shoves it up. However, this is a controlled explosion. You don't want to block the, the can 
because um, if the ball can't come out, something else is gonna give and you're gonna have a dangerous explosion. So, snug is good, but not too snug. You need to be careful when you're measuring this. Mm -hmm. Meticulous is not a word to describe me, usually, but I've discovered that if I remain meticulous with this um, every time, uh, it's much safer and more successful. So, we're gonna take the ball, snug, and we're gonna push it all the way down to the little piece that's blocking it right here. While cutting off the lid of the bottom can of cannon, I intentionally left a little scrap piece of metal there to block the ball. So the bottom can remains an empty chamber where the explosion pressure can build up. And I have carefully labeled uh, the, um, the methyl alcohol. Uh, the reason I changed containers is because I can now measure with my makeshift dropper, it's just a, a pen here, so I'm going to use the old uh, vacuum trick, I'm going to cover it up, and I'm going to carefully put two of these, because that's what I've determined to be the right amount, in the hole in the opening. Notice the tennis ball is already in there. And I'm also very careful to put the cap on as quickly as possible so this doesn't get knocked over and cause any problems. I'm gonna shake this a lot. I want all of that liquid fuel to evaporate. And then the cloud of fuel will explode much faster and give us the propulsion, the pressure, the push to put the tennis ball up in the air. Notice I'm also wearing a glove now because obviously last time I got burned by the hot can. And then... Last thing, in the past I've gotten one to work, but then after that it doesn't work. Uh, the can is hot right now, which tells me some of the liquid has uh, not evaporated and it's still burning. Don't want that to happen. So I'm not flicking the liquid out anywhere, I'm just spreading it out so it does evaporate. You want a dry can when you start. I find when there's some liquid in there, it doesn't work. So I just do this, making sure I'm not spilling anything. I just try to get the inside of the can, which still looks a little shiny, to dry before we start over again. Asparagus can cannon. Yay! All right, it's all fun and games until somebody gets burned. Uh, speaking from experience, I learned a very valuable lesson with this. My dad told me a long time ago that methanol, uh, which they use in car racing, burns invisible and you can't see it. Well, it's another thing to actually uh, have it happen to you. So here's an example of a famous situation um, where this guy unfortunately where he was on fire, could not see the flames, but could feel it. And the people around him were very confused, um, as was the mechanic who came over and tried to put him out. The mechanic actually caught on fire. Again, can't see the fire. Good news is they, they survived. They're okay. So uh, I wanted to share this observation that I made. When doing this, in slow-mo, you can actually see the heat. So I did an experiment here just to, to show the shadow part on the ground as evidence that the heat is causing the sunlight to refract or bend. The same way our atmosphere causes a star to twinkle. But what I failed to realize was that's not just heat, that's actually flame. It's just clear flame. It continues on and you see the ground shimmering there. That's the heat being caused by this invisible flame. So methanol is not anything to be played with. Uh, even for the adults out there, please be very careful. And how does invisible fire relate to this project? Well, I assumed, because I couldn't see fire, that there was no fire. And in fact, there was. After the launch of the tennis ball, this continued to burn. I noticed it was hot. I thought it was odd how quickly it got hot by a flash. Well, turns out it's more than a flash. So when you, if you try this, please make sure uh, you were in a place that won't catch on fire, and don't use too much of that fuel. Alright, day three, a couple updates. Added the fourth can just like Mr. Yaney did. Have a new ignition switch instead of a lighter. Iron the hole. 
Where'd it go?